Good evening. Welcome to uh, the Cape Elizabeth uh, School Board meeting. Uh, this is the meeting that was postponed from Tuesday, September 11th, um, and it is now Thursday, September 20th. Yeah, I see shaking heads. 20th, <laughs> um, year 2001. The first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. This is the um, regular September school board meeting uh, that has been postponed from last Tuesday, uh, September 11th. Um, and at this time, I would like to pause for a moment of silence as we uh, reflect on the tragic, tra tragic events of uh, last Tuesday, September 11th. Moving on, um, adjustments to the agenda. Uh, at the end of the agenda, item uh, 12, uh, I would like to add um, a brief executive session uh, for the purpose of discussing a personnel issue. Next on the agenda is approval of the August school board minutes um, in the packet. Are there any corrections to be made to those? to those minutes. Seeing none, we're going to move on. Um, comments by our high school uh, representatives. And if you could start by introducing yourselves to us. And you, you'd be right up here at the podium. My name is David Greenwood. Uh, my name is Christopher Roy. Um, we're both seniors at high school, um, and uh, the previous experience, uh, we've, I've been treasurer, uh, class treasurer for the past two years before this, and Dave's been treasurer, uh, treasurer for one year. Um, and, okay, um, I guess the first thing I wanted to talk about um, uh, is probably like the most unfortunate um, thing, um, and obviously that's, you know, the most defining issue of the past uh, few weeks, the beginning weeks of school. Um, and um, uh, on September 11th, we did hear from Mr. Shedd uh, over at the PA system uh, about the tragedy that occurred in New York uh, and uh, Washington, D.C. and Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, obviously, um, it was quite shaking for many students. Um, and the rest of the day was kind of cut up between watching uh, reports of the tragedy unfolding um, in the lecture hall and stuff like that. Um, and um, in fact, the past few days were kind of like that, just punctuated by news reports and stuff like that. Um, but uh, eventually we got over it, and that's what Dave's going to talk about now. The uh, students' reaction to the tragedy was um, actually kind of motivating. Uh, students rallied together, especially the senior class. Uh, there was a massive blood drive at the Red Cross that uh, several class officers of the senior class participated in. A lot of the seniors went to donate blood. There's been uh, blanket and relief funds. Uh, there's two or three different funds going around the high school right now uh, for blankets and money to the Red Cross. Uh, right now, we're looking to start a small memorial in the breezeway between the high school and the pool for uh, firefighters. We want to put a national ensign up, and maybe a MIA flag, and some uh, flowers or candles. Um, not, not lit, of course. Um, let's see what else. Also. Uh, a lot of, the, especially the seniors, is what, or who's being affected. Uh, some of us got together and painted the rock on 77. Uh, Chris and I were both involved with that. Um, it just really unifying the past week. And it kind of shocked us all. But. Yeah, um, I just like to say, I mean, the, the swell of patriotism was definitely um, inspiring. And I think that, that would definitely be the silver uh, lining to this, the, the, uh, the tragedies that occurred. Um, and. Um, 
on a lighter note, um, I guess we'll talk about the other things that have been going on at the school. Um, the past few weeks have been uh, fantastic um, for the beginning of school in the summer. Uh, uh, and um, probably the most defining issue um, uh, has been the arrival of the new administration. Um, and uh, all I can say um, is that uh, it seems to be uh, widely, uh, the new administration is, uh, is very popular among the students. Um, I'm actually uh, working for the Cape Insight on, um, on the feature article on the new administration. And during a, uh, a period C poll of uh, cafeteria goers, 89% uh, approved of the job that Mr. Shedd and Mr. Tinkham are doing. <laughs> so uh, it's not scientific, but not scientific. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and most of the rest couldn't tell yet, and it was a very small negative rating. But uh, anyway, 89% uh, you know, is fantastic. So uh, um, definitely, if that's any indication of how the administration's been progressing, um, you know, it's almost as good as the president's getting right now. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, definitely, everything's been going fine at the high school. Um, the response to the tragedy has been great, um, and the new administration has been working out uh, great. Uh, all the students really like it, and the SAC is just just met today. Actually, we're really looking forward to uh, working with them to um, to better uh, to improve life at uh, Cape Elizabeth High School. Um, so uh, that's all we have to say, really. Um, okay. Uh, are there questions for uh, uh, David or for Christopher? Just a quick comment, George. Since you were both involved with the painting of the rock, I'd like you to know that there are photographs of that now circulating New York City and Fort Bragg, North Carolina. We'll uh, pass it on to yeah. our classmates. Thank you. And uh, on behalf of the school board, um, I, I want to make sure that we uh, do thank you and the rest of the students at the high school for the, the efforts in terms of pulling together. Um, it's, a, it's a great sign of, uh, of community and, and certainly um, uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing to be doing. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We now have uh, comments from our middle school students. You might want to pull that. There you go. Hi, my name is Brianna Bowman and I'm the school board representative from the middle school. Uh, our school, in response to the incidents of September 11th, has taken action by doing things such as selling ribbons, collecting donations, and having bake sales to benefit the American Red Cross. And it's a very hard event to deal with in the middle school, if there, especially if there are people that you know have been affected. And, but we're all doing our best to work together and help everyone that was affected. Hello, my name is Lily Hoffman. I am the other school board representative from the middle school. And another upcoming event is the Sally Foster gift wrap sales that will start tomorrow and end October 4th. 50% of the profit will benefit outdoor experiences for grades 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. And also student council elections were recently held and were very successful. And in conclusion, um, sports teams are now underway and we hope it to be a very fun and exciting year for the sports teams and for everyone. And that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Are there questions for our middle school reps? It's always tough to do it the first time, and then you get used to it. Um, also, questions? Also, on behalf of the board, we want to thank you and the students at the middle school uh, for the good efforts. We do appreciate that, and um, it, uh, it bodes well for our community. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Good job. We're going to move on to um, communications. Under communications, I would just like to bring to your attention two items. One is the annual report of college admissions for the class of 2001. And also in your packet is the middle school schedule for outdoor ex experience trips and the planned fundraising that will be happening to uh, support those trips. OK, thank you. Um, on the agenda now is uh, comments for, from the public. Excuse me, George, I had one other, I guess you would yes, call I communication. Have. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, you no, should ask for it. It wasn't on the agenda, but I had <laughs> communication. Go ahead, on uh, Wednesday, September 5th, I had the opportunity and pleasure of addressing the Rotary Club of South Pole and Cape Elizabeth. And the topics of my talk were uh, main learning results and the school funding formula. 
I think by the end of the night, I had succeeded in muddying their understanding of these two topics to the level that mine is muddied, so it was a great success. Uh, but it was, it was a joy to go back. I, I at one time was president of that club, and it was good to uh, renew my acquaintances. Very positive experience. Good. Kevin? On a personal note, I'd like to thank the members of the faculty, the board, and the public who called and expressed their concern for my family and my son during this recent uh, tragedy. And secondly, um, if you are aware of any Cape resident who is serving on active duty or is a member of the National Guard or Reserve and has been called up, would you please get their names and military addresses uh, to the school department or to myself? Um, we have a group of teachers and young people who would like to adopt them and help keep their morale up uh, as they prepare for whatever is coming at them down the pike. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, other communications? We can move on to, um, ordinarily we would do recognition. Uh, there's none scheduled th for this evening, so I'll move on to the superintendent's report. Uh, a few items. One, um, most recently is the uh, dealing with the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation. Uh, this morning, a subgroup of the foundation uh, went to um, Portsmouth, New Hampshire and met with um, some individuals who have been involved with the Rye Education Foundation. It's been a very successful endeavor in that community. Um, they've been around for approximately seven years um, and floundered for about five and a half of those years, but in the last year or so um, have really flourished and been able to raise a significant amount of money. The whole purpose of the foundation that, that we're looking for in Cape Elizabeth is very similar to Rye um, in an effort to to put together a large pool of money and use the investments off of that to support uh, special programs and initiatives in the school. So you'll be hearing more about that and what we learned uh, from Rye after the Education Foundation Group has had a chance to meet about that. Also on future direction planning, I hope you all receive the four-page executive summary um, of our future direction plan that was created uh, in an effort to um, get out to the community uh, the strategic goals, the mission, the vision, and the, the implementation schedule for the first year of our future direction plan. Um, I have been presenting that at the curriculum nights um, along with Marie, when she'll probably talk about with her um, facilities report um, to parents, and we've been able to distribute a significant number, close to, at this point, about 750 of those plans um, to parents, um, and have had pretty, very positive feedback about that. In each of our schools, one of our goals this year was to take a look at our beliefs that we have for the school district, and then to look at those in terms of what that means for each one of our schools and our buildings. Um, so they've gone through an activity which we call beliefs in action, um, in defining um, when we say something like all students can learn, what does that look like at Cape Elizabeth High School, Middle School, and Pond Cove School? Um, what are the behaviors we're apt to see in those schools relative to our beliefs? Uh, that's the next step in our, in our planning process. Um, the curriculum uh, committee has begun. The professional development group met over the summer. Um, vision review team has met, and so most of those committees are, are well on their way and we'll have further updates as we go through the year. And just with regard to just a general comment on the opening of school, um, it was a very positive um, first uh, few days with the workshops for staff and taking a look at the, the, their professional needs. Um, we did have st two student days um, to do those opening of schools kind of events. Um, this year we tried having a, a longer weekend um, for parents and students on and, and having that Friday off. Uh, we'll get some feedback from people how that worked this year and that'll help us in our decision making for our calendar for next year. As you're aware, um, we're dealing this year with the middle school bulge. Um, we are tight on space at the middle school. Um, we're sharing space with community services. One of our classrooms is, has to, had to be relocated to community services. Um, and that functions as a classroom during the school hours and a community services room during the after school hours. So we are this year sharing space. 
If I had to look at some of the focus areas for this year um, that we shared with staff, one would be the first year of, of implementation of our future direction plan, and the other probably would be a, the work that will be done in the area of facilities and, and the referendum that is planned for the spring. But overall, I think a very positive opening to school, and I would like to congratulate um, all of the buildings uh, and principals on how um, the tragic events were handled. It isn't something that, that we could plan for. We did have a meeting of our district-wide crisis team. Um, we reflected on, on what kinds of things we were doing in our building, keeping in mind at all times the safety and security of our students and how we are dealing with the, the emotional well-being of, of all of our students. But it wasn't something that any of us had any past experience with and, and no predetermined plan could have, could have supported us in this. But I think everyone used common sense and good judgment. Um, and I think that helped us get, get through this, this most difficult time. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Um, we're now going to move on to the uh, reports from principals. And we'll start with uh, Tom at Pond, Pond Cove. Good evening. I'd like to start by following up with what, what Tom just said, by commending the entire Pond Cove staff for the way that they responded to last week's national crisis. Just to brief you on how we responded, we at the elementary school decided to spread the word personally, so all the grown-ups knew more or less what was happening in the outside world. But at the same time, we wanted to insulate the kids as much as possible to keep them safe and secure. Three of the key people doing this were secretaries Barbara McLean, Secretary Nancy Anger, and teacher Alan Brady, who was available, who were staffing the phones. They presented the best face possible to the public that day by remaining calm themselves, by squelching rumors and reassuring parents that everything was okay. I think they did a terrific job. Our goal, because we know the community so well, was to get through the kids, get the kids through the day, knowing that the parents in Cape Elizabeth would want to share the news as best as possible very personally. So I want to thank the parents too for coming through. Tom mentioned that the uh, district crisis team mentioned, which was very helpful. We also had a series of meetings at Pond Cove with just the faculty to debrief each other and to share strategies for how to, on Wednesday, uh, encourage the kids to talk about the events within limits. The strategy was let them talk, but don't overwhelm them with uh, information. Tom mentioned we're not particularly trained to do that, but something in this crisis brought out the very best in all the grown-ups at Pond Cove. They handled it really well. You've heard about some of the activities at the high school and the middle school. It's a little different at the elementary school. All the kids want to contribute in some way, so we're having a penny drive. To me, small things add up and make a big difference, and that's going very well. We are trying also to connect with the high school with their uh, ribbon sales. And Kevin has mentioned the idea of our adopting service people. I think for the elementary kids, that would work very well. And uh, one of the resident geniuses at Punco, one of the teachers, suggested um, on a really down day that our theme should be courage and heroism, and that uh, immediately galvanized the staff to think about the people we could thank and support during this crisis. And we've made a connection to uh, Gail Parker in the middle school to the symbols of heroism during this time with firefighters and relief workers. So for the elementary school kids, the world has changed, but at least we're, we're, there are some positive things coming out of it. Um, I'd like to move on to more conventional things. The, uh, the school year started uh, almost in full swing. We had a terrific start to the year. I think a lot of it is due to the preparation that uh, teachers did over the summer. We have about the same number of kids this year that we started with last year, about 640, although they're just dis uh, distributed a little differently. The first week, I'd say it was about 89% supported, about 100% supported by the teachers. They really like the, the schedule. The parent reaction from the few parents who have talked to me is a little mixed, so we should probably talk about having that But but uh, next year. But the teachers really liked it. Tom has mentioned the work we're doing with the Climate Committee. Uh, Assistant Principal Carmen Melito has been the point person for that. He's on the uh, Climate Committee district-wide. He facilitated the discussions at Pond Cove on August 31st, and again yesterday during our late start game time. And we made a lot of progress in a short time. So uh, Carmen deserves um, some congratulations for that, and the staff 
through all this has remained very focused on their jobs as educators. Questions? Questions, comments from Tom? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now to the high school, Jeff. And Jeff, before you start, I was wondering if you could speak about the margin of error in the uh, cafeteria survey. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll, the safe answer is no comment on that one. I'll, I'll thank, the, thank them for the results of the poll. Um, I don't want to repeat what David and Chris said, but I wanted to touch on a couple of other um, things uh, relative to the response to September 11th. Um, I think the first time I heard about it was about nine, a little after 9.30 when students who had who were coming, arriving late, uh, had been listening to the radio on the way, and they started talking about this event. Um, and then Mark Tinkham, the assistant principal, went on the internet, and we began to get, get some information. Um, and I wanted to point out um, the very effective and sound advice that I was able to get throughout the day from Katie Lisa, our social worker, and Belinda Snell and Sharon Merrill, the guidance counselors in the school, as well as Mark Tinkham, um, to try to find a balanced response. Uh, that sort of balances the need to know, but also the need eventually to get back to some some sense of structure and normalcy in the day as well. Basically, what we did is for the first, the, the initial reac reaction was simply to try to gain some accurate information. And sometime a little after 10, I went on the intercom and explained just in a very brief way the, the, the very bare bones information that we had because I didn't want to make any mistakes. Um, and I explained to the student body that we were scrambling to find where there were cable connections in the school so that we could hook up um, televisions um, so that students could have the opportunity to watch some of the events that were happening. So one of the things that has come out of this is we now know where the cable connections are, um, and there aren't very many of them, and where they need to be as well. Um, we were eventually able um, to hook up cable TVs in the Learning Center, which is the place which is capable of holding about 80 students, and also in the library. There were a couple of hookups that we were able to pipe into. Um, so we allowed students to go and teachers to bring their kids to those locations. And um, teachers are nothing if not resourceful scroungers. Um, and I was amazed within about a half an hour or so after we began to set those things up that there were TVs all over the school um, and kids finding their locations, their comfortable locations in various classrooms, if not in the learning center or the library. So there are a lot of things that were sort of happening spontaneously in the course of all this. Um, a couple of hours into it, the kids had been absolutely great. Um, and, but we did begin to get the sense, and after talking with the counselors and others, that maybe it was time not to stop, not to stop getting access to the information, but to try to get students back into their regular classrooms and begin to get into the flow a little bit. So I did ask students uh, with a little bit of trepidation if they, if they wouldn't mind at, right after lunch going back into their regular classrooms, they could continue discussions, and by that time there were TVs set up. And I, I won't say I was amazed, but I was very pleasantly surprised that, that there were no squawks or protests. I mean, people went into their classrooms. I sensed that there was this need to, okay, let's begin to get back to some, some, some degree of structure anyway. Um, and really, a lot of the things that have happened in the high school since then have been, as, as David and Chris have described, has really been sort of the spontaneous brainchilds of pockets of students here and there in the senior class and all over the place. And, and the only one that, I, I, that, that I'm aware of that they didn't catch um, is one that I wanted to mention. Fortuitously or not, there had been a meeting scheduled of, of wh what a number of students wanted to start a brand new volunteer club. And this was happening, the meeting for that was happening, I think, the day after the events in New York City and Washington. Um, and Katie Lisa is sort of the advisor of that. And she was amazed Wednesday afternoon, I believe it was, when over 60 students showed up for a brand new club that had never been, never been in existence before. And that is become, becoming one of the focus points for a lot of the ideas that students are generating. And there, there are many others on the table, including they wanted to go and paint our very rusty flagpole in the front of the school, but Katie assured them that, that maybe we could get the maintenance staff to do that or something, but it is a very rusty flagpole. So we will get a, a painted flagpole um, uh, appropriately so in front of the school because of their idea, um, even if they're not allowed to go up and do it themselves. Um, I just, so that's, that is really sort of the reaction, and, and I just wanted to say how much of it, how much of it really is coming from the students, um, and it's, it's just great. I did want to comment just on, I have been able to uh, start getting into teachers' classrooms, and it's been a wonderful experience. It's been interrupted a little bit by a few days last week, 
And I, I could point out lots of different um, things that I've seen in classrooms, but I just want to describe one particular lesson that I sort of popped in on Richard Roethlisberger one day. And I am, I will, I have to confess, an artistic ignoramus. Um, I have virtually no skill at any visual arts whatsoever. Um, and this was a foundation that the introductory uh, art class in about the, the second week of school. And Richard had the kids doing something which I could never do, um, but he had established a comfort level with the kids where they selected an object, they put it in front of them. I remember one student in particular had a little model of a Volkswagen car, and they were supposed to pencil it in and exactly as they saw it, um, and, and, and there, was, there were a whole bunch of things that, that students were doing. The next steps after they did that, and that in itself was challenging enough, uh, is that they were supposed to then, the next day I believe, the task was going to be to take that object that they'd drawn isolate out the different shapes of the object and draw those shapes as sort of isolated things. And then the day after that, as I understood it from Richard, they were going to put those things back and recreate another object based on the same shapes. And it's just an amazing, amazing exercise, uh, I thought. Um, and I really enjoyed it. My time is over. I could go on and on with what I've seen before. <laughs> Thank you very much, George. <laughs> George I'll, take that, all I'll take that as a cue uh, if there are any a questions. Subtle hint. <laughs> I'm glad to answer any questions. <laughs> We've been struggling with how to, uh, you know, kind of uh, contain the principal report. I understand. So I, we have this new little mechanism. The next step is... It's very effective, very effective. Thank you very much. The next step is the zapper at the podium. I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to resort to that, Jeff. Any questions for, De for Jeff? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Middle school, Nancy. <laughs> I don't know that I really want to come up here. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Um, I, too, would just like to compliment the entire middle school staff on the way they helped us react um, and respond to the tragic events of last Tuesday. Um, there certainly is no script for things like this, and everyone, we just sort of relied on common sense. Um, the response and procedures are sort of as you would expect from the middle school or a combination of what happened at Pond Cove and what happened at the high school. Um, Tuesday happened to be a day that um, <clears throat> Julie Salikas was not there, and she's one of our people we would immediately go to help us figure out how to respond. Also, Mr. Madden was away from school that day, so it was John Casey, Kim Sturgeon, and me trying to do um, the best we could and make the decisions um, that we could to inform our students if we felt it was necessary. And, and I will tell you, that was a debate for us. We weren't sure, and at first we thought we weren't going to, but then as more of our students came and went, and as any typical middle school, they, most of the reasons they go out during the day is for orthodontist appointments. Um, Tuesday is one of those big orthodontist days, and then people came back and were sharing bits of news. So we did make a, a I did make a very simple factual statement, and we moved forth from there. Some of the older students were watching um, television, always with an adult present. Once again, we had the problem. It's not, it wasn't a very clear picture because we only have one cable hookup, which we dug around and found. Um, in an older classroom by some of us remembering it was there. And then at the end of the week, as we went on, I did send home last Friday with all of the students um, sort of a summation of what we had done and information for parents so they could have it clearly where we were going. We'll say one of the best things, our students too, um, really wanted to know what they could do to help. And because they're younger and they can't uh, do blood drives and those kinds of things, um, the fifth graders, with Gail Parker's help, she had hooked us up with um, some people in New York, and they were on Wednesday and throughout the rest of the week drawing some happy pictures to send to the New York Fire Department and the New York Police Department. Another fifth grade class also wrote um, cards of encouragement to Mayor Giuliani. So it's a real fifth grade kind of approach um, to things that they were doing. Some of the other, many of the other grades, as Brianna and Lily explained to you, what they were doing and working forth to also make a contribution. So with that said, on to other things that are going on. We have had our curriculum nights. They were very successful. We did receive some good parent feedback for ways to improve upon them and make um, them even more informative and better next year. So we'll certainly take all of those under consideration. Yesterday, as Tom alluded to, we did spend the day with the Climate um, Committee. Our climate work has been led by Sarah Simmons and John Casey. Sarah was sort of caught up in travel plans and not able to make it back yesterday, but John led us through the latter part of the activity. And we also have some really good things to share about our beliefs in action. And people 
really a lot of energy and excitement around those activities because it's like putting all the things we've been talking about, we're really going to do it and we're really going to make a difference. So um, there was lots of energy yesterday as people were meeting in their groups and John has collected the work from them and he's seeing lots of similarities between the four working groups we had yesterday, just combining some of the beliefs in action. And I just wanted to also update you on when we did our goals and what we were working on this year. I had explained to you that in professional development, what we were really trying to do at the middle school is to model lifelong learning by developing our own professional development plans. And people have done that. And by giving teachers the time to do that, and these will be the late starts and early releases and full days that are not taken up by system-wide activities, um, people are doing some really interesting things. We've got a quite a group of people that are working on different extensions of summer work that they had done, either in curriculum or particularly in technology. Um, people who may not have had a chance to go to some of the technology things, but other people on their team did, and now they want to know how to do PowerPoint presentations. Um, people who had started working on websites but wanted to get back and do some more work on those websites. And then other people who wanted to share the websites back and forth and um, just even build new ones, complete some and build them. Uh, we have a whole group of people who are going to work with Gary Lenoy to get started on an iMovie approach. Quite a few sixth grade teachers are doing that. Susie Van Wy has also joined that group. So it's a cross, it's an integrated group that's getting to do that. People like Hayden Atwood, our librarian, he's offering several courses um, for teachers to have a chance to come in and work with the updated research tools that we have in the library and putting those to use. And then also conducting them in a further course, how to evaluate websites. And we're really trying to work on a way for students and teachers to also evaluate resources that they give, get off the internet to see if they're working. Um, Another one uh, from the guidance counselors, from Kim Sturgeon and Rick Madden. When we did our alignment with the learning results several years ago, one of the gaps we had was a real focus on career education. We did some things, little pieces of it, the career fair and other kinds of things. But over the last several years, both Rick and last year Kim have worked to provide some sort of career education component to each one of our grade levels. This year, they're going to be also be working on now that they have those pockets developed to really put them together in a continuum for five through eight and see what is an overlap that maybe we can replace with something else so we can have a very effective curriculum look at that particular area. And it's also, I think, when you do something like this, another point that has been shown to me is that for some of our people who have a particular um, need for some staff development that is not universal, but for their job and what they do for us, it would really be very important. And this is giving people like Pam Vos, our social worker, is going to do a whole bunch of work on developing some narrative therapy kinds of things, which would be very applicable to her line of work, but would probably not have been anything we would have offered to the entire school staff. And we have another um, teacher who's working on literacy analysis and response and also enjoyment because she's a teacher who happens to work with students who don't like to read. And so she's got to teach them not only how to read critically and carefully, but also to find enjoyment in it as well. So I think it's going to be an exciting time for the teachers um, in professional development. And I look forward to a lot of great sharing with them. Even today, as we were, we haven't their first real day to work on these plans is October 3rd, um, those 90 minutes, and people were already wondering about how soon can we start sharing some of the great ideas that we have. So I think it will be a very productive time for them. Thank you. That's good, Nancy. Um, questions or comments? Seeing none, I'm going to move on to committee reports and start with uh, this evening's uh, finance subcommittee. Kevin. First, I'd like to thank Jack Roberts, finance chair of the town council, who stopped by and attended our meeting tonight. Unfortunately, we were unable to dazzle him with our financial wisdom. It was a very brief meeting. Um, as usual, we have signed warrants, reviewed the appropriation reports, typical housekeeping duties. Pauline reported to us the financial impact of staff changes um, for the year, uh, of, over the summer, I guess. Um, we, uh, the net result was we had $109,000 in uh, excess funds in the, in the salary uh, item, but unfortunately because of uh, numerous serious illnesses and um, maternity leaves that are, which are not unfortunate, um, we've already spent $107,000 of that, so 
it's pretty much a wash. And finally, although we do not have the uh, annual audit report yet, Pauline reported to us that the year-end uh, budget number excess was $284,000, which is just slightly less than the 2% we plan on every year. So uh, that came in as, as we had hoped. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Um, an update or uh, committee report from the policy subcommittee, Jennifer? Um, we met the first Wednesday of September and um, as a regular subcommittee. And last night, and sort of put together this <coughs> subcommittee, <laughs> I guess, to look at um, athletics, all our athletic policies. Uh, that committee had uh, its first meeting last night, and it's comprised of um, some members of the policy committee, coaches, administrators, parents, uh, booster members, students. Is that about it? Um, we met for the first time last night, and we'll be meeting monthly, basically, to review all our athletic policies. Our next meeting is... Um, Wednesday, October 3rd at noon in the Jordan Conference Room. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And an update from the uh, Planning Committee? Mm -hmm. Marie? Um, well, I'm going to talk about the Facilities Committee instead of Planning. Planning will not start till December. Okay. Um, but as uh, Tom had mentioned, Tom and I spoke at um, all of the curriculum nights that we had. And um, Tom talked about future directions, and I talked about facilities and about the referendum that will be coming up in the spring. Um, we are still looking for um, volunteers to be on this building project committee. We have had several people come forward, and um, we are still looking for some parents from any of our schools and um, representatives from, say, uh, builders or contractors, marketing people, journalists. Um, we can use any of your help. And even with, with the people sitting here in the audience, if you know of any parents or people that you think would be good on our building committee, um, the deadline is this Friday, the 21st. After that, we will be meeting to, or I will be presenting to the board next week at our workshop a list of the people for the committee and the school board will have to approve it. And our first meeting will be sometime within the first and second week of October. And that's where we are right now. Okay, thank you. Um, we don't have any unfinished business, so we're going to move on to new business. Consideration of the superintendent's recommendation to athletic fee position for the fall. Um, I would like to recommend um, the following individuals for coaching positions. Sarah Jordan, 8th grade girls soccer. Tim Thompson, 7th grade girls soccer. Jeremy LaRose, 7th grade field hockey. And Ben Putnam, assistant 7th and 8th grade tennis. Okay, we need a motion. Jim? I would move that we approve the superintendent's recommendations to athletic fee positions for the fall season. Okay, thank you. In a second, Susan, any questions or comments about the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. We're going to move on to um, consideration of the superintendent's recommendation to co curricular fee positions. So I'd like to recommend the following individuals at the uh, high school, middle school, and some mentors at all of the schools. Uh, senior Class Advisor uh, Dwight Ely, Student Advisory Council Ted Jordan, Belinda Snell, and Katie Lisa, Bartleby Sarah Gridley, uh, Fall Art Club Advisor Lacey Goodrich, and Joan Moriarty and Jake Jackson co-advisors ninth grade. At the middle school, uh, Joanne Paquette as the seventh grade rep to the student assistance team and the following individuals as mentors for new teachers, Linda Paul, Kelly Hassan, Suzanne Janelle, Buddy Earl, Mary Murphy, Julie Salikas, Kim Huckel, Joe Doan, Claire Rams Ramsbotham, and Margaret Welch. Um, we need a motion, Marie. 
Um, I make a motion that we accept the superintendent's recommendations for um, co-curricular fee positions. Thank you. Um, and a second, Jennifer. Any questions or comments about this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. We're going to move on now to uh, a standard part of our business, which is um, I need a motion to approve to receive and spend all federal and state grants for 2001-2002 school year. Kevin. I move that we authorize the superintendent to receive and spend all federal and state grants for the, the 0102 school year. Thank you. And a second. Um, Elaine, thank you. Uh, questions or comments about this motion? Seeing none. All those in favor? 7-0. We're going to move on to the consideration of a request uh, from a teacher to postpone his sabbatical leave. The details are in the packet. Mm -hmm. um, and you have in front of you, this doesn't at this doesn't time take, take action, right. but it will go into an, um, and you have a, both D, 12D and 12E. One is a request for sabbatical leave and one is a postponement. And um, as you read the letter, it's a unique circumstance. And I commend uh, Andy Strout and his effort to, um, to try to, to, his allegiance to the school and in knowing uh, there are only two teachers in the physical education department that that's his first priority to remain there this year. Um, but this will be something that will be on the agenda uh, for approval with the rest of the whatever other sabbatical requests come forward for the 0203 school year. Okay, good, thanks. Um, so that takes care of items uh, 12 E, D, and E. Um, and uh, before we have a motion to go into executive session, I just want to briefly go over the dates to remember the next um, school board workshop is uh, this coming Tuesday, the 25th of September at 7 p.m. on your maybe on the updated agenda, yeah, it's at, it says that it's at the fire station conference room, which is where it is, um, and it's a joint meeting with the town council to discuss the community center. Um, the policy subcommittee meeting, as Jennifer said, will be Wednesday, October 3rd at noontime in the Jordan conference room, and then our regular school board meeting for October will be on October 9th, uh, starting with the finance subcommittee meeting at 6.30, followed by the regular school board meeting at 7.30. Um, at this point, I do need a motion to adjourn uh, this public session to begin a brief executive session to discuss a personnel issue, and there is no plan for us to come back into public session. Kevin. I move that we adjourn the public session of the school board meeting and enter executive session for the purpose of discussing a personnel matter. Thank you. Second. Elaine, thank you. Questions or comments about that? Um, that motion then, uh, all those in favor? Motion passes 7-0 and we will go into executive session. Thank you all very much for being here this evening.